Go ahead, Matt, take it away. Okay, thank you, Cece. Um, and since our group is pretty small, I, I would love it if you if you wouldn't mind just in the chat, just uh, just quickly putting what your kind of your role is, or if you're a dev, or you know. UX or program management or just whatever, just so I can kind of know who I'm talking to, what kind of audience. And I'd like to kind of cater this to you guys, especially since we're a small group. I think it would be more meaningful if um, we, we, we hone this conversation to what's news, most useful to you guys. Thanks for turning on your cameras. Some of you, that's good to see some faces. Um, so let me just quickly, I, I'm from Code for Utah. I've been building civic tech stuff for probably two decades, really. Um, so a long time. And so I want to just kind of share some of the experience that I've had and hoping that maybe I'll help you guys as you look to build technology to solve problems that it will hopefully be done in a wise manner that's sustainable over a long term, over a long time. Um, I'm not very good at doing multiple things at once, so I'm going to look at the chat real quickly, just uh, see, so data analyst, brigade captain, dev, project manager, um, teaching, um, okay, this is, this is good, that's very helpful, thank you for telling me, um, another brigade captain, okay, um, this is really good, so I would invite you to just, uh, oh, and a UX, and education, okay, just feel free to also just jump in at any point. Um, I'll try to monitor the chat, but I don't know if I can do both at the same time, but honestly, just feel free to just jump in. Um, I, I'd like to kind of keep this kind of a discussion um, and kind of fluid and we can kind of just take it where we want. If not, I've got some stuff, some slides that we'll just, we'll just go that direction. Let me share my screen here. Um, I want to just do my, I think this is it. Okay, did you guys um, seeing my slides? It says welcome. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that feedback. Um, okay, so are you seeing just, are you seeing my whole desktop or just the slide welcome? Can someone, just a slide? Okay, cool, thank you. Um, all right, um, let's see. I gotta remove some windows here. Okay, um, first of all, I just wanted to point out that I think we all, including you, are a rare breed. You know, there's not very many of us who are really contributing to society the way you guys do. And so it's very important that we keep you guys very efficient and and productive and we don't saturate your bandwidth so that that prevents you from continuing to serve and multiple projects so that's really what this project is or this presentation is geared around is how do we keep you guys efficient um and because that's that's a problem i've had is i've i've taken on projects that that until i get saturated and then i i i i, I it's not fun anymore and then I, I can't do anymore and it just it's just kind of a, a bad cycle to be in um so let me kind of help describe the problem that I see. Um, and please jump in if, uh, if with any comments or questions. Um, okay, um, so the first thing is uh, solutions to social problems are seen through the lens of your tool belt. So every problem we come across, you guys see the answer or we see the answer um, through the tools that we have experience and that we use. And so that, that can be a two-edged sword because you might see the perfect solution, but it might be only through the lens of the tools you know how to use. And there might be a better tool set and the, a better tool that will make it so that you could sustain and maintain this project over a long period of time. So keep in mind that you might be very skilled in the tools that you know how to use, but they might be the wrong tool. And so hopefully that might I might, that might become evident as we talk through some of these things. Um, the solutions are, are fun to build, but painful to maintain. And so that's a good thing to keep in mind is, is when you're first starting out a project, um, it is so much fun and you just wanna move really quickly and fast and using the tools that you know how to use. Um, but then once, once you've reached a certain point of the project completion, all of a sudden the fun starts to wane 
And then all of a sudden reality sets in and the project can become very laborious and difficult and time consuming to maintain. Um, then nobody wants to maintain someone else's code and most don't even know how. And that's a big problem because sometimes there's a lot of turnover um, in brigades and in volunteer organizations. And so someone will come in, throw something together and then leave. And then we're all left holding the bag and we don't know what to do with, with their, their stuff. Um, and so, so it comes to the question, how many projects can you really handle? You know, and it, it, that depends on how efficient um, and simple these projects we create are. But the goal is, that, is so that we can do, is if we build technology in a way that allows us to do more than just maybe one project or a couple. And so um, we want to make sure we just don't get saturated. Um, another, another problem we have is just maintenance fatigue. Is once you build something, then it becomes, you know, you just get tired. You just get tired of running something. So we want to make it so it's not, it doesn't take a lot of effort for, for projects to run, for technology to run. Um, okay, I'm, I'm sure you guys have all heard of WordPress. WordPress is a great, um, a great it's, it's a great open source project out there. Um, and it can be a really good solution, um, but I'm gonna just quickly tell you my experience with the open source version of WordPress, not the hosted version. Um, then it was, it was actually kind of a nightmare um, just to maintain over a long period of time. Um, and just as I was preparing to, for this presentation, I went into a, a WordPress instance that I'd installed literally 10 years ago, um, if not longer. Um, and I wanted to see what the state of this WordPress um, site was. And here's, here's kind of what I found. Um, when I first went to the WordPress site to try to log into the admin dashboard, I couldn't even log in. And there was no error message or nothing. It just wouldn't let me log in. So I had to go into the server, go into the log files, tell the log files, and then log in again to see those PHP errors come across the screen so I could see what was going on. And then I saw these PHP errors. I had to Google those um, to find out what, how to fix this. I eventually found a one line simple fix, but it took a while to find, you know? So I fixed that in the PHP file. Um, then I go back to the admin, I'd forgotten my password. Well, I clicked on the forgot password link. And then I remembered that this isn't gonna work because I had disabled the mail function in PHP because um, that's a big um, vulnerability risk when you turn on mail from your server because people will hijack your server and use it as a spam server. So I turned that off because I've actually had that happen in the past and my server was being used for spam. Um, so now I had to go to straight to the database to reset my password field. So I tried to go into PHP my admin, which is a MySQL front end. Um, and then I realized that was out of date and I was having trouble with that. So I had to upgrade my PHP my, my admin. Um, then I finally got in to the database um, and changed my password. Um, then I go back to WordPress, log in, and then I find that my WordPress instance is very out of date. Um, and so I clicked on the auto upgrade feature in WordPress, which is a really great feature when it works. And then it asked me for my FTP username and password, which I could not remember. Um, it had been, this has probably been a couple of years since I've come in here and done some of this maintenance. So I was stuck again. I had to go in and manually download this, 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 the code and install it on the server. And, and that has problems I won't go into. But anyway, so I finally up and running again. This probably took an hour and a half um, of my time, but it just was not fun at all. And it's a constant, constant thing that you never get rid of, uh, of upgrading um, on your software. And there's, other, there's other products too. WordPress is just one example that I've worked with, but any open source project, like um, another old one that I used a lot was PHP BB. It's a bull bulletin board uh, um, service. Um, they all, they all kind of have similar problems. Now, so that's, that's an example of maintaining, you know, an, an open source project. Let's just talk about, you know, building something from scratch. Um, so if you build something from scratch, it's, it's, it, there's some pitfalls that you can come into is there as well. And here's an example of a, a project I had built. Um, and I went in there to just 
see how things were going and how the code base was. Um, and one of the things, a couple of things you do um, on a on the front end, um, this is a node um, project, um, is you'll run npm install. And npm stands for node package manager. And it's it basically just helps you um, manage all the node dependencies in your project. Um, it's very popular um, today. But this is a very simple website created and I had 400, over 400 dependencies on this project. Um, and I'm not doing a lot. And it's, it's, NPM is a fantastic because there's something out there, there's a solution out there that does what you need it. And it's really easy just to attach it and bring it into your project. But the, so the problem with that is, is you have a huge list of dependencies that are almost invisible to you, but they make you vulnerable. Um, and so I ran NPM install and I found out that I had this is one year. This is leaving this website alone for one year. I had a hundred vulnerabilities on my site. Um, and then there are different categories, low, medium, high, and critical. Um, and only 21 of those could be auto fixed. There's a way to just auto fix upgrade, upgrade to the latest version of the, that package. So I had over, you know, 80, over 80, 85 of these that I had to, to do, to do it right. I would have had to individually look at them and to make sure and evaluate them and, and upgrade them and possibly test my site to make sure it wasn't broken. Um, and that's just a tiring, not a fun thing to do. And this, a lot of projects are susceptible to this, these, these, these issues right here. Um, but I just blindly upgraded all of these packages to the latest version and just crossed my fingers, hoping that nothing is gonna break. Um, then I ran an NPM upgrade. And then it, in that process, it added 57 new software packages to my <laughs> dependency list um, from a hundred, over a hundred different contributors. It removed a bunch, updated, and then it moved some. You know, so it's constant flux of code moving around um, uh, when, when you're using um, off the shelf open source stuff. So, um, so there, there's a lot of things, uh, there's a big list, uh, bigger than this that I've kind of come across of things that just make it really hard about building technology um, for long-term use. And that's what we want. We want the, the solutions we build to be around for a long time so that people can benefit from them. Um, this is just a list of some of the things that, um, that I hate and I, I'm trying to avoid. Um, as I've just talked about, maintaining dependencies. Lots of dependencies are easy to just, just get to your project. Um, managing operating systems. Most people don't do that today. They'll use hosted you know, uh, services and, and machines, virtual machines. And so um, this, that's not so much as a big problem, but it still is a, is a very pervasive thing is maintaining the operating system level stuff. And then the database, keeping databases up to date Scaling services, if you're not in the cloud um, and you have to account for scaling your service, that can be a nightmare. Um, and just dealing with bloated um, projects um, that are just open source projects that have just been, been around for a long time, have grown to just a humongous size. They have a great feature sets and they're a great tool, but they're just large and bloated and archaic in a lot of ways. Um, and then Maintaining APIs is a, is a, is a, can be a challenging. Um, lots of boilerplate code that you're just copying and pasting around um, and maintaining. Um, here's one that I don't like. It's just complicated and, you know, configurations and deployments of an app. You know, when I look at GitHub at, at different projects, if I see, I, I always tend to look at what it takes to get the, the, the software program up and running. And if it has a long list of complications and different tools and things they've, they've put in there, I'll, I'll avoid it. Um, so a lot of JavaScript dependencies or issues. Um, now here's a big one is staying on top of the latest JavaScript framework. You know, there's React and Angular and Vue and, and you know, all, these, all these popular frameworks um, that are really enticing and fun to, for, for a developer to use, um, but they, they change quickly. You know, a lot of these have a life cycle of, of about 18 months. And then the next, the new one is on top and everybody's switching to go to that one. Well, the problem with these frameworks are is they, they get outdated quickly and then it's hard to find someone who wants to go back and maintain a project using an old 
you know, not hip and exciting framework. Um, you know, another aspect is, is when you, when you're building custom stuff is sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll rent, uh, rent a coder, you know, from a cheap location. And, and that has a lot of challenges. Um, um, uh, I see you guys are making comments. I mean, I'll come back and look, look at that. Um, so here's kind of one principle. I just, I just think is a good thing to look at first when anytime you're starting to start a project is, is can I host this solution instead of building from scratch? And this is, this one's a tough one just for, for developers because developers love to just build and code stuff. But I think the first thing you should do is look to see if you, if there's a hosted solution that can do what you need rather than trying to go down the path of building something custom. Um, it'll, you'll get up to speed faster. And the, the side effect is, is you're gonna probably see some upfront costs, but I think that's actually a good thing. Um, in the case of WordPress, if you use the hosted WordPress on wordpress.com, it's, you know, it's about $25 a month. Um, but the savings, uh, the, the effort that you'll save and work um, by paying that fee is, is probably worth it in and of itself. But not only that is that the, the, the product owner or, you know, or someone who's, who has invested interest in this project coming to life will pay for that hopefully. And then they'll feel invested and then they'll feel like they're getting something of value. Anytime we just build something for free and using our resourcefulness and then, then people just, view it as it's, 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 it has no value because they got it for free. Um, and then one key thing though, as you do look for hosted services is make sure you, you try to avoid vendor lock-in and vendor lock-in is just using a, a service that, that traps your data. It either traps it so you can't get it out or if you can get it out, if you wanted to move to a different hosting provider, it's, it's in a proprietary format. And that will just cause a lot of pain. So try to look for companies that use um, open standards and the data can be imported and exported. Um, okay, so after evaluating, you know, what you need, what hosted type of solutions are out there in the market, if you still feel like you need to build something custom, here are some guidelines that I think are important to, to follow. Um, imagine yourself touching this code every month for a decade. You know, if you, if you look at it from that lens, you're going to make decisions differently and you'll build differently. You know, build with maintenance in mind. Don't use the frameworks that I talked about. Try to just stick to just bare bones, internet technology standards, like just plain JavaScript. Um, be careful of APIs um, and just getting out of control with a lot of APIs. And here's, here's one principle I think is a good one is try to just build a static site. Try to just get down to just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Actually, no JavaScript at this point. Um, and, and, and just see if you can use add-ons. Um, if, you, if you can just build HTML websites, um, it becomes incredibly cheap, uh, very fast, and it will never break. It literally will, will never break. And, and if you just do add-ons like discuss is to add comments to your website, if you need to take payments, PayPal, whatever, there's lots of plugins and add-ons you can do. And those, yeah, are dependencies, but they're, but they're, they're, they're easier and to maintain and they usually last a, a long amount of time. Um, let me, any, any, any questions before I jump into what I also do is want to show you something I've built. Um, and I gave you a warning here because it's going to sound like a commercial, but it really isn't. It's just a, a service I've found that I really like. But any questions or comments up to this point that you guys might have? Um, uh, Matt, just really quickly, because I don't want to take too much time away, because I know you don't have much left. But um, I do agree with everything you've been saying. I would point out that you also, especially when you're working with an agency, a lot of us do know what their says because a lot of them are going to be Windows stack and all these great web tools you build for them. They're not going to be able to maintain either. So just something to keep in mind. Yes, thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Um, and th yeah, thanks for pointing out how much time I have left. I didn't realize um, it is going so quickly. Um, what I really want to do is show you really quickly um, 
I need to, I think we're gonna have to stop. Well, let me see. Can you guys see my net, my other tab here? I switched tabs in my browser. Do you still see my slide or do you see Wasatch Wildlife Watch? We see the Wildlife Watch. Oh, oh, excellent. Okay, perfect. What I did is I created this, this website. It's for, um, it's for, for all these organizations actually down here, National Geographic and a bunch of Utah uh, based organizations, but it's, it's to help uh, monitor and research our wildlife and, and how humans interact with the wildlife. Um, and it's a full user based system. You can, you can create an account um, and, and you can um, do all the CRUD operations based on user, um, user accounts, but the thing that this enabled us to do is be able to, our, our volunteers could go out, they set up camera traps out in the wilderness. They're camera, motion activated cameras, they strap to trees and stuff. And then they go out every two weeks and do observations on those. And this is a, a reporting sheet that they have to fill out. But I was able to put all this together. Um, and here's an example, here's all of my um, observations. And you can see where those cameras were placed up in the mountains. Um, but I was able to put all this together with 200 lines of code, um, 200 lines of JavaScript code, virtually no dependencies on, um, there was no N NPM dependencies, no server-side um, APIs. I was using GraphQL. Anyway, all this stuff, and it's, st it's still under the free tier. And what I'm using is, um, Mongo DB um, Stitch, which is a fully serverless uh, um, solution. Um, and so I, I'm out of time here, but um, I just, uh, you know, I hope this has, has been helpful. Um, real just quickly, um, is there any other questions or comments you guys might have? Was this, <laughs> was this helpful? Was it over your heads or not too simple enough? What, what do you think, Dan? <laughs> I was just going to say, I think this is great. Thank you so much. Um, I am interested. Is this uh, available? Is this repo available somewhere, like on Code for Utah right, or something? I'd be curious to see how you set that up because I have a very similar problem I'm working on. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. It is not open right now. It's in a private repo, but I can, I can, I can hook you up with whatever whatever you need. It's, there's nothing sensitive in this. So I think I could either either send you the code or open it up for you um, if you want to reach yeah. out to me. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I'd just be curious to see how you structured it because I have a very similar problem with monitoring uh, water flows in Tucson. So yeah. Oh, it would be fantastic. Helpful. OK, well, the time is up. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll turn it back to you, Cece. Thank you all for coming. I hope it was, it was useful. Yes, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and, and, and end the meeting uh, since the next one is coming out right up. But so if you're here for that one, feel free to just jump right on in. All right, thanks all.